Hello there. Today I'd just like to give you a very tightly focused demonstration of bringing morph targets into Unreal Engine for use in sequencer animations. It's going to be a tightly focused run through. I'm not going to be going over importing animation hierarchies or resetting anybody's centers or anything like that. Just uh, going over the nitty gritty of morph targets or blend shapes into Unreal 5.x. I'm going to be using Lightwave 2020 today, but the operating theory is good for anything that uses a vertex offset, whether it's Mo Modo or Maya or Blender or Lightwave or whatever. So let's get started. I'm going to be using some geometry from a really old project I did way back in the way back that was a loving homage to an old Commodore 64 game. Uh, nice and simple, not too much to worry about, very basic. I'm going to freeze that geometry because Nanite does all the heavy lifting, there's no worrying about geometry reduction. Uh, this also seems to mean that there's no in-engine subdivision, which I think is actually a loss from 4.x. Maybe I just haven't found that option. Exporting FBXs, I'm using FBX 2016 from Lightwave 2020 because I found it to be fairly bulletproof. I'm preserving smoothing groups. Uh, the auto smoothing group function in Lightwave 2020 is actually really, really good. Saving that FBX there. Overwriting the test one I did earlier to make sure I wouldn't be talking through my hat to you all now. Over to Unreal. Make a new folder and import. Grab that geometry. Now, Rather than going through all the functions in this panel, I'm just going to hit a checklist. Make sure it's a skeletal mesh, because that way you get the import morph targets option, and that's really why we're here. Um, importing meshes in bone hierarchy is generally a good idea. In this instance, it means, as well as the body, I'm also going to be getting both my eyeballs and my lovely, lovely dentition. This won't preserve centers of rotation, or pivot points, or anything like that. That's a whole other kettle of fish, but we'll talk about that another time. So here come all my bits and pieces. If I open the skeletal mesh that I've just brought in, in here we can see all my morph targets. That was painless, wasn't it? Uh, in fact, far too painless, because nothing in real time happens that fast. No, sorry, if we were to create a level sequence here, let me just uh, go through the rigmarole of creating a new level. Get rid of the ground. Save it as, oh, just going to call this test. Pop my skeletal mesh in here. Uh, if I go and have a add a level sequence, I can't. I can add this uh, object into the sequence, and no problem. I can keyframe it and you know, give an animation track as much as I like. But I can't connect the morph targets on there. Not quite that easy. There's an extra bit of steps we have to go through. So to start with, if we right click the skeletal mesh and go to create animation blueprint. I like to use the convention ABP for animation blueprint. Double click that to open it. This is going to be a bit of a rigmarole. So I'm just going to do the first few to give you the idea. But as you can see, the deformations all came across just ricky tick. So to get them usable in Sequencer, what we need to do is go to our Geometry's event graph, where we've got event blueprint update animation, drag off a pin, set morph target. It's really not rocket surgery. You just need to know where these bits and pieces live and how to plug them all together. So if I get back to the Geometry editor, for that imported model. I can just right click there, copy name. 
paste it into my morph target name here. Bop. Right click, promote variable. Irritatingly, that puts that in an awkward sort of position, but it can be dragged out. Paste the name in again to give us a nice control name in sequencer. Make sure instance editable, expose on spawn, and expose to cinematics are on. Tuck that away. I'm just going to copy and paste the set morph target. Bam, back over here, right click, copy name, back over here, paste, click, paste, curl, curl, eek, eek, cool, cool, copy, paste. I'm going to paste that up there this time so that when I promote that variable, I can see that more easily. Searchable, expose on spawn, expose to cinematics, and scowl. Right, that'll probably do to be getting on with, so let's compile and save. Check that. Cool, cool. So now, if I throw my ABP whizball into my animation editor, use that. Active Sequencer, ABP Whizball, and again, a bit of a rigmarole. Add Skeletal Mesh Component 0, then Anim Instance, which is that particular one, and then you can add your Morph Targets into the timeline. And simply key them. As one would normally. Now, one extra step, because nothing in real time ever happens quickly. We need one more step to get our real time in our real time. So in the outliner, making sure you've got your ABP selected, pop open the details panel and search for update. And down here under skeletal mesh, you'll see update animation in editor, which is unchecked by default because you need to say, no, I'd like some real time in my real time, please. And once you've checked that, then your morph values become interactive in the timeline. And you can set morphs to your heart's content. There. I hope this is useful to somebody, and uh, thank you for watching.